And in that sense of hope and peace and joy and love, let us pray together. Loving and gracious, amazing God, You who draw near to us as we draw near to You, opening ourselves to the fullness of Your love in our lives. Open us as we prepare ourselves now for that deep encounter with Your Holy Spirit that transforms us, changes us, moves us, inspires us. Through the graciousness of Your Spirit, draw draw Your presence near us so that we might taste and see that God is good. And in the moment of transformation, God, help us to believe and to live what we believe. So, in that openness, O God, I pray that You would now touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to You. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. So in this season of Advent, traditionally within the Christian church, we reaffirm these values that we hold dear and hold true to the Christian faith, these values of hope and joy and peace and love, values that we believe were encountered in the Christ, values that we believe that God wanted to reveal to the world, and values that we have been called again and again to live out in our own experience of life. These values of hope and joy and peace and love are values that we believe the world is in desperate need of this day as those transforming agents of God's grace in the world. And in this season of Advent, we have been choosing to think about this theme, Just Wait. And what does that mean for us at Cathedral of Hope? What does it mean to be a community that is just waiting in this sense of anticipation and in the sense of what the future might look at. Just wait. As we began to think about this over a year ago, we thought about what the world might be looking for in this season of Advent in 2018, this season of just waiting. And we decided that just waiting was not about just sitting back passively to think about what the world might look like, but to actually anticipate what the world could really look like if we were to welcome the Christ amongst us, that if we truly believe that the Christ was drawing near, that the Christ was present, that lived out in each and every one of our bodies, if we lived the fullness of these values, what would the world really look like as we turn the clock from one year to the next, from one season to the next? What could the Christ child bring this year that was perhaps different from previous years? If we would ask ourselves, what did God really intend the world to look like, and could that world become a possibility in each and every one of us? Just wait. Just wait and see. Just know and taste and see that God is good. It is the anticipation of each and every one of us as we think about this season of Advent and what this Christ child means to the very deepest parts of all of our lives. And in this Sunday, we come to celebrate and to affirm this anticipation, this just waiting for peace, peace to come on earth as it is in heaven, this peace of joy and goodwill to all people, this peace that passes all understanding that keeps our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. So often when we talk about peace in the English language, just like in so many other words, love being one of those other words that has one meaning and seems to be used and applied to so many different circumstances, when we think about peace, we often think about a a world that has no war, a world that has less conflict, a world that is more peace-filled. But the truth is that when Jesus used this sense of peace, He he used that word shalom, that, that, that word that has such deeper meaning than the word peace could ever convey in our own English language, that, that, that sense of shalom. 
If ever you've ever been around our Jewish community, you will know that they greet one another and bless one another with this deep sense of shalom. Jesus would have called upon the language, the ancestral understanding of this sense of shalom, peace. And shalom has much, much deeper meanings than we could perhaps even unpack in a sermon, but needless to say that the word shalom has implications beyond just the greeting of peace and holding out a hand of welcome. Shalom is about that sense of well-being, that sense of deep spiritual connection, that, that shalom really is about affording someone else more than perhaps you might even want to afford yourself. That, that doing wonders to another is as important, perhaps even more important, than the sense of our own well-being. Imagine what the world might look like today if we were to really embrace this sense of shalom this sense of deep understanding that, that my care and concern for another person is as important, perhaps even more important than my own well-being myself. What would it be like if we could create that sense of shalom by opening ourselves, embodying this sense of peace beyond this moment? Not just to bring about world peace, you know, that's what every pageant woman and man stands up and says, I, I want to bring charity and world peace to the world. It's not what Jesus calls us to around this sense of peace. Of course, we want world peace, but we can't rely on everybody else to bring world peace unless we are engaged in the process ourselves unless we have deeply rooted ourselves in what it means to be a person of faith, deeply rooted ourselves in the shalom of Jesus. It is Jesus who invites us not to sit passively back and wait for God to magically wave the magic wand and world peace happens, poof! <laughs> Jesus invites our participation Jesus indeed calls upon this sense of knowing God to bring about this peace by not passively sitting back and believing that God will wave a magic wand, but by using the, the magic of our own lives to bring about peace and goodwill to all people. That peace and goodwill that upsets the status quo, that peace and goodwill that, that enables this well-being, this wellspring of God's reverence in the world today to, to bring it through each and every one of us. The sense of shalom is about a well-being for all of humanity. And so often we forget that this sense of peace, this sense of awe and wonder, this sense of God's presence here on this earth, this Emmanuel, this God with us, is a God who is actually living through us, calling on the very best of who we are to make peace, to be peacemakers and to find the importance of what well-being looks like for our neighbor as much as it does for ourselves, calling forth the very best of who we are, which sometimes in this season of goodwill and all people can be a little bit traumatic when you're running for that best deal in the shopping mall and moving people out of the way because there's only one left. Peace deep peace, that deep peace that runs like living water through the world and through our own bodies, that deep peace that ultimately brings peace to everyone. You see, this sense of shalom, this sense of peace actually can only be achieved, in my opinion, when we are able to reconcile our relationship with God and with God's creation. This sense of shalom, this sense of peace, this sense of healing the world, of bringing the world back together, this sense of repairing that which is broken, this peace is only achieved when we have that reconciled relationship with our neighbor and with our God. 
It's what makes Advent so important for the Christian church because it is that wonderful opportunity to reinvent and to re-engage and to recommit to what it means to be those people who are on the way, living the fullness of the embodiment of the Christ that is within us. Not just a historical Jesus that was born in a manger more than 2,000 years ago, but a Christ who was resurrected after His death, who ascended into heaven, and from where the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh and is embodied in you and me. You see, the birth of Jesus is an action that gets reenacted every single year when we make again our fresh commitment to these values that God has made first made real in Jesus. And yet so often in the Christian church and in our own experiences of faith, we forget that we are the embodiment of Christ, that the Christ has been born again in us this day. And in order for the Christ to be born again in us, we must willingly participate, not passively sit back, but willingly participate in the repairs of the earth, the repairs of relationships, the reconciliation of God brought to earth in Jesus and now made real in you and me. We so often want to sit back and let it all happen, but this gospel of Jesus, as I've said on numerous of times, this Christianity that we believe is, is not just a religion, it is a lifestyle choice. It is something that we actively engage in. It is something that we becomes a habit. It is something that moves and changes the world because it moves and changes us. If our faith does not change us, if our faith does not transform us, if our faith does not become real in us, then we have not engaged in the fullness of what it means to be a person living in the way of Jesus. For our faith must transform us, our faith must change us, and our faith must be the work of peace, of holding out the hands of friendship to someone like Jane and holding those hands looking deeply into the soul of our beloved and saying peace. Not just a passing phrase, but a deep sense of peace. That is what Jesus offers to you and me, those opportunities every day to stop and to pause and to re-engage with what it truly means to encounter the Christ in our world, encounter the Christ in our lives. And you and I, we get the opportunity to practice that every day. What would it be like if we would be able to do that to a stranger? Easy to do it to Jane, even in that most uncomfortable moment of looking into each other's eyes, even though she's pretty cute. <laughs> but what would it be like if we could look into the eyes of a stranger, or perhaps even look into the eye of an enemy, or to look into the eye of someone who we perceive as an enemy? and to say peace, this deep peace of understanding, to look into the eye of a refugee coming to this country, hoping for a better life, running perhaps from places that have oppressed, and to look into the eye and say peace and welcome, or into a person of color whom perhaps we have seen as an enemy in the past, and to say, peace. Let's fix this world together. Let's fix this world together. Let's make a difference this Christmas as we welcome this Christ child, not just in a manger, but through our lives, encountering the presence of a Christ who only calls us to the work of peace. And if we forget that work, then Jesus does not get to be born this year. It is only made real in you and me, in us, 
as we make that dramatic entrance just as Jesus did, the dramatic entrance into the world, so we make a dramatic entrance into the world when we become those change makers and peace creators. It's not easy work, but it's work that Jesus calls us to. It is work that this God that we believe in entrusts to us. For God has no hands but ours, no feet but ours, no arms but ours, no peace than ours. And it is incumbent on this church and upon all good people of faith in this season of goodwill to all people to mean that. Goodwill to all people. Not just those we like, not just those who share our beliefs, not just those who look like us or act like us or know how to do fabulous like us, <laughs> but goodwill to all people, the good, the bad, those we agree with and those we disagree with. For that is the work of repairing this earth through our own relationship with God and through our relationship with one another. My favorite hot hymn sometimes, uh, song other times, is let there be peace on earth. And we often forget that final phrase of that song, let there be peace on earth, but let it begin with me. Let it begin with me. Let it begin when I consent to actively engage and to be involved in the work of peace, when I consent to actively involve myself in the works of justice, when I actively involve myself in being a bridge maker and to enable this Christ, even in the midst of our failing to understand, to be that peace that passes all understanding and keeps our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, that which moves and transcends beyond us, beyond our own understanding, and is able to make the difference, for our humanity can't. But we believe that with God all things are possible. All things can be reconciled if we might find that commonality of the values of this Christmas season, this joy, this hope, this peace, and this love, that if we could just embody those four values, will not only be a betterment to our lives, but will be a betterment to the world. Let us give birth this Christmas. Let us ask ourselves the question, this season of Advent, just wait. What would the world look like? What did God hope for in this arrival of a Christ that through you and me can be made real this year, perhaps in ways it has never been in the past? And in all of that, this season of just waiting might just be birthed and might just make a difference. May it be so as we commit again to let Jesus be born in us this day. To God be the glory, and God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.